a wonderful and a pleasant morning to one and all. I'm Anicia Alvarez, and I am with the Teacher Education Department, and it is my pleasure to present to you one of our students who initially have conducted the research on the, the perceptions of students and their, their images of scientists, and today she is presenting the results of this study to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Heatherlyn Butler. All right, since technology is our favorite thing in the world, I'm going to do a little practice run. I have to point at the right thing here. Yes, okay, good. My education has paid off. All right, well, good morning, fellow students, faculty, and guests. Uh, I would like to thank, most of all, the teacher education department and Dr. Alvarez for this opportunity. Uh, it sort of took me by surprise, but I'm thrilled to do this. My name is Heather Lynn Butler, as Dr. Alvarez said, and my presentation is children's perceptions of scientists, how they view the idea and the concept of a scientist. Uh, let's see here. We should practice coordination, I think. Uh, this study came about actually as a result of um, a study done by Chambers in 1983. After observing uh, many drawings of children's, he came up with what he called the Draw a Scientist Test, otherwise known as DAST. So from this point forward, that's pretty much how I'll refer to it. This uh, was supported by, and please pardon my lack of Gaelic, uh, Maldeman Nye and Maulin in 1988. It was an Irish study done uh, uh, very close to that time. So after that, Finson, Beaver, and Cramond in 1995 then um, developed a checklist, they called it, uh, DAST C, so Draw a Scientist Test Checklist, uh, for a better interpretation of the DAST. And during that process, they came up and discovered two general categories of the images. First, standard, and then the alternative. Later, in 2003, this was modified by Farland Smith. Uh, they took the DAST-C and actually renamed it the M-DAST. What the modification was is that they, <coughs> excuse me, they added a very specific prompt, okay, something it's lengthy, but it's a, a very specific question to the children, and then a rubric whereby they could measure and accurately uh, interpret the results. So this actually increased the reliability of the DAST-C. Now, the collected studies that I've just mentioned, uh, again, to reiterate, revealed a common theme. Two general categories, standard and alternative. We're going to talk about standard more than anything else, and I have an, an expanded uh, view of alternative a little bit later. The standard, what we call the standard view of a scientist, includes male, lab coats, uh, eyeglasses, facial hair, um, even I noticed some balding, uh, sorry about that anyone, uh, but you would see pens in pockets and, and laboratory and flasks and test tubes, the things that we generally think of in a chemistry lab. Your alternative, however, was the mad or sinister scientist, okay, I think many of us rec uh, remember uh, Frankenstein, a smiling or positive uh, character, and female. This was considered alternative. Now, here is a picture. Uh, or three, actually three drawings done by, now these are seventh graders, okay, so they're going to be a little more developed. And we can see the first two extremely traditional, just what I've mentioned. Uh, notice that the far one is very happy about his job. Uh, but this is the alternative uh, example. Female, again, nothing typical. You don't see the lab coat, the eyeglasses, anything of that sort. Uh, this particular initial study, the one that we're talking about today, uh, was conducted with lower primary children. So most of these studies were conducted with upper elementary, say fifth grade, on through high school and even through college. My questions were then, 
what is the perception of scientists by first and second graders? My second question, how have the images changed from those original studies back in the 1980s? This first graph, oops, excuse me, did I go backwards? Oh, no, no. Give me one second here. Where did I end up? Aha, uh -huh. getting ahead of myself. All right, so this study was conducted then within a local school here in the valley uh, with 21 first graders and 24 second graders. It was uh, administered during their, what they call their extracurricular times or specials, as they like to call them. So it was not a strict classroom setting. The study was then conducted without an interview, and as a side note, the DAST-C most often uh, is used with an interview. However, we chose not to on this occasion. The following instruction was given, however, draw what you think a scientist looks like. Okay? Not what you know about scientists, but what you think they look like. Uh, children, for this exercise, the children were then given 15 to 20 minutes to, to complete the image. They were welcome to use crayons, coloring uh, utensils, or just pencils, whatever was available. By the way, as we go through these pictures, you'll see in the drawings, just for a frame of reference, the yellow pages are all first grade, and the white pages are all second grade, so that keeps it fairly easy. Now, this first graph <coughs> is a, a bar graph of all the standard observations according to the checklist. So our standards are going to include lab coats, eyeglasses, facial hair, symbols of research, most often test tubes and flasks, even microscope and Bunsen burner. Now, in some of them they did show uh, experimental plants, we had symbols of knowledge, technology, uh, captions, if they wrote any equations or formulas on the board in the background or anything of, like, of that sort. Mail. In fact, I'll just point this out very quickly. Look at the, uh, compared to everything else, 47.5 and I believe 54% drew mail. So very high percentage. Uh, signs or labeling, the pens in the pocket, you know, the pocket protectors, uh, any unkept appearance. Again, the sinister scientists, we're getting into the alternative now and positive and female. Okay, now the second graph then shows what I mentioned earlier and uh, an expanded view of alternative observations. Um, first and foremost, I noticed there was static and non-static. What I mean by that is static, nothing's happening. You know that it's a scientist, you know the setting, but the scientist is doing nothing, nothing's happening. Non-static mean that there is some action in progress. Uh, we went on down. Creatures, you know, the, 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 the scary, fun things that kids think of. Um, chairs, lab settings, nature settings, computers even, self-portrait, detailed drawings. Some of them are very, very intense on their drawings. Colorful. Um, down at the bottom you'll see speech, scientific or non-scientific. A lot of them said, I love you, or put their name on it, or hi kids, but some of them then also gave scientific speech, counting, or formulas, or something along those lines. Are there vapors coming out of those test tubes? Do they recognize what happens with that? And then two plus people. Is there more than one person depicted? And how many pictures had absolutely no scientific evidence. Very quickly, because I don't cover that later, take a look very quickly here at the top line, the light, the light purple. That's first grade. So only 9.5% of the first grade pictures showed no scientific evidence. That's a very small percentage. Comparatively speaking, 58% of second graders showed no scientific evidence whatsoever. Very interesting. All right. Let's see. Now, with all of this information, I chose to, uh, to focus on five uh, major categories or areas. Now, previous studies had showed an extremely low percentage of females depicted as scientists. Okay? However, we see a very surprising uh, amount of females depicted by 
first graders, actually. Now, second grade is a little more evenly split. But remember, first graders haven't had all the education that second graders have, supposedly. So this is an unusual uh, result. Now, the second category was the overall appearance of the scientist. Okay, we've mentioned some of that. The traditional, in which case I call normal, and then your mad scientist, uh, the crazy, freaky hair and, and hunchback and, you know, all the fun things. Uh, very, very interesting to see that whatever influences there are, first grade still comes up with a high percentage of the normal. Okay? So let's see here. Okay. Now, whereas second graders were fairly split between the normal and the, uh, the mad scientist, the sinister one, uh, this is a first grader showing in relatively good detail a female scientist, for starters, okay, she does have on a lab coat. Notice she has on a mask. She also has on eyeglasses. So some of the tr very traditional, normal uh, characteristics, but she's female. So we've incorporated an alternative aspect to this. The test tubes on a rolling cart. Remember, this is first grade. Tiles on the floor. And even a framed picture of the famed uh, symbol of knowledge and technology, yes, the test tube. Okay, now, I by contrast, oh, I have to say this is one of my favorites. Just, I would frame it if I could. This one, uh, a second grader, we have action. We see the vapors, they're moving. She's holding. She's doing something with those test tubes. We have flasks. But this is a mad scientist. Can you tell? Don't you love these dark circles around? Now, this is what college students generally look like uh, right around midterms and finals and, you know, Christmas break. However, they're, they're not old enough for that yet. So, but notice that this is actually a female mad scientist. This is the only one that came out as a female mad scientist in all of, all of those pictures. Okay, so here, next, next finding was location. Where does the science take place? Where does the work happen? Uh, note that the second, note the second grade emphasis, and that's in the yellow, the second grade emphasis on laboratory or traditional. Okay, 33%, and, but notice how low the percentage is for first grade. Well, what did they draw? They drew nature or something outside of the laboratory, but most often nature. Nature includes your deserts, your rivers, flowers, trees, sky, birds, things of that sort. Insects, so a lot of insects on this one. Um, let's see. Then here is our first grader. Now this one is fairly ingenious. Either this student knows a lot about evaporation or snow melt and rivers, uh, but notice there it's not traditional in any way. We have a fun little hat. Never seen that on a scientist personally. Uh, no eyeglasses, no facial hair, but he is holding a tool, an instrument a magnifying glass. So this is considered action. Again, something is happening. He's representing a process. The second grader, uh, a little more, s a little simpler. Now, perhaps this, this, uh, this second grader imagines scientists as doing work outside and bringing it back to the lab. But one thing that we have also seen is this uh, within the, the normal, is the uh, tendency toward secrecy and privacy. So this is an underground lab. Uh, perhaps that's where the student was going with it. Again, without an interview. It's guessing sometimes. All righty. And then we come to activity. And this is what I mentioned before, static versus non-static. OK, we've seen some variation between first and second graders, but this is astounding. Generally the same here in the whole idea of no action. But look at the high percentages, 71 and 66 percent for actual action. Something's happening. So students are, are drawing the concept. They're drawing the idea, the action, that it's not just here stands a scientist, but there's a doing with that image. Now, this, this doing, as it were, to clarify, could include observation of nature, uh, using tools, 
mixing solutions, or in the case of this one, uh, we have the mad scientist, note the fun teeth, uh, counting down in anticipation, three, two, one, something's going to happen. Although, I'm not quite sure what it will be, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, the second grader, now in this case, note, and isn't this great? I, I love his use of color coming from a, a, an interior design aspect. This is, this is a, a beautiful mix. This young man has shown us nothing in the hands. He's not actually doing anything, but there's still action. If you look from the far left side here, you see there are vapors coming out of the flasks. Something's happening, something's moving. A solution is moving from one flask to another through a tube, releasing a liquid, perhaps creating this, we're not exactly sure, but, all right, now for tools used. As I mentioned before, students do include tools within their, their drawings. Now, this I found fairly interesting. Again, remember, yellow is second, green is first. Computers, 33% of second graders drew computers. Technology, technology, and you've seen them, first and second graders on their little phones, they're already aware. First graders, though, had absolutely nothing along those lines. But what did the first graders draw? Microscopes and Bunsen burners. So they did have a little fun. So here's our first grader representing that. By the way, that is I like science, not I like sins. Just clarify that. Oh, and someone pointed out, note the tablecloth, that a, that a young boy <laughs> drew a tablecloth for his science table. Delightful. This is another one of my favorites, a second grader. Uh, this one is very unique. This is actually drawn by a boy, and he has depicted his main character as female. <coughs> Blonde, of course. But she is doing something. She is observing an insect, a butterfly. However, he didn't stop there. He included two male assistants on computers. So he has, maybe he has watched CSI, I don't know. <laughs> but he has begun to incorporate uh, more of what we see on TV today. Well, based on these findings, it would seem that overall depictions of scientists by first and second graders still lean towards the normal lab coat standard image, uh, working in a laboratory and using flasks and test tubes. In this initial study, the second graders uh, are already surprisingly strongly set in their image of a scientist. That's stereotypical uh, image. And the location being the laboratory. Interestingly, with a stereotypical image, okay, it is likely that students will shy away from careers in science or any interest at all. And this was discussed in a uh, study conducted among secondary level students, so that's sixth grade and up. It is important, therefore, to determine the influential factors on early aged students and then consider these as variables for future studies. Now, by contrast to the second graders, first graders appear to view scientists as working outside a lab, specifically in nature, and include more female depictions. And by their own descriptions, they show a high self-percentage, or excuse me, a high percentage of self-portraiture. So they draw themselves, that self-identification. Now, in this particular study, that is probably a result of a lesson that was known to have been taught just prior to the, um, prior to the study, though not in collaboration. And this most likely made a strong impact on the way the first graders viewed scientists. So the efficacy of a specific teaching, contrary to the lab coats in the laboratory, uh, of a scientist is corroborated by research uh, that was conducted among students in higher grades and even pre-service teachers who, when given a specific instruction or teaching, found that their own views and perceptions of scientists actually changed. Now, before I actually get into recommendations, though I have to, and you're welcome to read them, um, literature thus far has said that, that images are set right around the fifth grade 
However, as I mentioned, this study has shown that as early as second grade, they already know and have this stereotypical idea. So with these findings and analysis, I did come prepared with two recommendations. However, I really, really want to stress that it is crucial that students, young students, understand that scientists are both male and female, that work occurs in a myriad of places. You don't too often see your anthropologists and archaeologists and, and marine biologists in a lab. They're everywhere else. Um, I think that once children are able to see that, they can apply it to themselves and careers. The recommendations, further studies should be conducted on these major influential factors uh, in order to affect uh, new perceptions. And explicit instruction on science and scientists should be as introduced as early as kindergarten and then continued on. Now there are quite a few limitations to this presentation, to this initial study. Um, we need a larger sample size and more schools. So I look forward to actually continuing this. So thank you for your time and your attention.